real estate. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How is the real estate work? Well, first Lord of all, how, like how would people Mark get Meyer. a hold of us? 787-3397. <laughs> and we should repeat that a few times during the show, I'm told. <laughs> Liberals or conservatives? Anybody. Yeah. We are non-discriminatory. Program. Absolutely. We are welcome to all. All are welcome. And then um, they could also email at mark at thinkingrealestate.com because I have my computer open. And you're on Facebook. I Could am. they Facebook you? No. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> they could they could they Facebook could go to thinking don't, don't, real estate. Yeah, thinking real real estate oh. Facebook and put in a question. No, I really no. Because a lot of people I get a lot of questions on Facebook. You do? I mean I get a lot of people like a friend of mine just asked me to go look at her house and she did it through Facebook. So Facebook message. It's, you know, you got to be open to any kind of communication. You should whatever, be. Whatever, yeah, whatever yeah. the client's favorite means is, that should become ours. So do you... Respond. Well, yeah. yeah. Do you count on Facebook? I do check it. I don't, okay. like, post every time I go to the grocery store or things like that. Okay. I don't do that. <clears throat> Twitter? No. Well... <clears throat> Sometimes if I post on LinkedIn, it automatically Twitters, I believe. Really? Mine's you can set that, that up way. Facebook that way, too. And mine might be that way. It's not. Oh, okay, good. It's not. Anyway. You, you've got to be careful now. <laughs> yeah, have you seen I'm the things that happen on Twitter? Have you heard about the things that happen on Twitter? No, what happens? Oh, Greg. Come on. Come on, welcome to the century. We're Twittering Help you. Help me. Have you, you know, heard of Anthony Weiner? Oh yeah, he tweeted. Yeah, you know I have. Uh -huh. You know, Jib Jab, they did a their year end thing, yeah. and then, and that was in their year end. Didn't I send that to you? You did. You might have. Well, and I had to laugh. You know, Jib Jab does the stuff, and they, if you look at their Facebook, I don't know how who's, I got who, there. Who's Jib Jab? It's just an online. Haven't you ever elfed yourself? No. Oh. Oh, we, yeah, we have. Okay, that's Jib Jab. For Christmas. And uh, anyhow, it amazes me how negative people are. About thing, you know. Oh, they've gone downhill on these. I'm going seriously. It's just funny. Cut them some slack. People need to be more positive. I think things are good. Things are happening. Oh I think yeah, the auto but industry is doing well, which is good for the local. Just depends on where you read. Which is good for now, the local. Now, if you were listening at, I believe nine o'clock. No, actually, it was in the eight o'clock news. They said the foreclosure crisis is now over. Well, it's funny oh, you should I, say I, that. I was stunned to hear that. Well, how could you be stunned? We've been ABC saying, News? We've been saying that for weeks. It's over? Weeks. Come on. It's well, we've been saying it's less. It's not over. It's less. But even last week, you know, our, one of our favorite listeners said that. It's not over. Right. But we, I respectfully disagree with him. It's so. not over. And don't call. <laughs> anybody. To debate that. No, well, any, anybody, anybody can call. No, you can call, but you can. How do they call? 787 <laughs> Three three nine seven. We should have cute cards. Look at Jackie's today. twittering right now. Yeah. Anyway, she's twittering. Help. Okay. Yes, yeah, help me. <laughs> Save <laughs> yeah. me. Help me get through this next twenty-one minutes. <laughs> is that all it is? It seems like a, yeah, two just, hours or more. <laughs> it flies. No, it seems like about two. So, I, I, last week I said I was going to pull some five-year stats. Mm -hmm. You did. Look, and he's I did. Got he has graph paper. I didn't even Laura, know he made it. I didn't know people make graph paper anymore. <laughs> they said, well, I've had it for probably ten years. Yeah. It was still in my desk drawer. Anyway. From college. Yeah, yeah. I know. So what, do you, so, so what do you want to know? Well, you did those Non-foreclosure prices and numbers. So here we are. This okay. is Jackson County, Greg. And I have mine that we have posted to the website. If thinkingrealestate.com, you can... www.thinkingrealestate.com. Right, I assume people know that. On the World Wide Web. <laughs> I assume they know that, www. We have 09, 10, and 11 posted there. But, uh, you know, back in 09, we were not tracking short sales. Well, I didn't pull short sales. I pulled foreclosures, non-foreclosures, and then everything. Okay. And, and so, your numbers are pretty close to what we have posted. Yeah. So. so in 2006, the average sale price for all properties in Jackson was 126,000. Wow. Plus. Okay. In 2011, it was 78,000 plus. That's quite a, a difference dip. of 37 percent. Quite a dip in five years. So when he told me that, I 
did a, I listed a home yesterday, and every time I do that, I run statistics. So I did the neighborhood, Michigan Avenue. North. North. To north the, of Wildwood to the railroad tracks. Between okay. which streets? Between West Avenue and Wisner. Uh-huh. And... So, so Grinnell, Bowen, Thompson, north. Webster. The, uh, yep. The north ones. And then Hibbard. Um... And in 2006, the average sale price was about 104. And what was it in 2011? 2011, it was 37,500. 104 to 37,000, and that's an a difference. An overall in... difference of on, on 60 minus 63.88 percent. That's a pretty stunning drop. Huge. <laughs> The yes. number, listen to this number, in foreclosure, there, in 2006, there were um, 164 foreclosures sold. In 2007, there were 546. <laughs> wow. So it went from 164 to 546 in one year. And in 2009, there were 1,086. In 2011, 790 foreclosures. So in five years it went from 164 to 790. That's a lot. Do you have a calculator on there? Uh, in the change you mean? No, on here. Oh, I have it. Yes, I do. Why? Because you could do the statistic. Well, it's 42 percent. And my cleaning people want me to mention that I'm keeping it clean. So I hope I get a discount. <laughs> they texted you. That's what they well, we said. We have to keep it clean. This is radio. <laughs> <clears throat> Not necessarily. <laughs> We want to stay on the air. Oh. We want you to okay. stay on the well, air. Well, that's a that's a debate with the national networks right now. It is. There's, so. The FCC. Ever yeah. since she got to be a city councilwoman, she has become so political. I know. I've I've learned a lot more. Jackie and I look news. across the lobby at each other and just roll our eyes every time she. <laughs> and opens I can't her see mouth. him, nor can I really hear him. <laughs> I can't imagine. I go like this. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and if you want to see what that's like, you're going to have to go to our website. Uh, non foreclosures in 2006, uh, the average price was 131.4, and in 2011 it was 111.3. So that's a difference of 15%. So people that actually own their price for their houses are getting more, more, significantly more by what? Uh, double. Yeah. Than so a that's foreclosure. good. I so hang check. in there. We'll pull out of this. Yeah. Moral of the story. And it has gone. You know, it's gone. Um, 2008, there were um, 967 foreclosures sold, 2009, 1086, 2010, 878, 2011, 790. So it is going down. Down. Slowly. Um, average sale prices in 2010 was up uh, relatively significant, significantly from 73.8 in 2009 to 81.1 in 2010. And I personally attribute that to the first time buyer's credit. That eight thousand so dollar higher in ten. It was higher in ten. It was down in nine, and it was down in eleven. Right, but eleven isn't as low as nine. Exactly. Okay. But it's down five percent. Yeah, and the other way I can Is that all see homes all homes. homes. Okay. The other way that I can see that the foreclosures are going away is, for example, that neighborhood I talked about north of Michigan Avenue. Last year there were eleven closings in there, and only three were not foreclosures. And if I look at the actives in that same area, only one active is a foreclosure. One thing that we didn't, that we're not mentioning, that I think is significant and probably plays a real uh, role in this, are short sales. Mm -hmm. I think that there are less foreclosures sold because there are more short sales being sold. And I didn't pull stats on short sales, but personally, I've done a lot more short sales in the last two years than I have. Well, there were 88 short sales in 2011, according to according, our Yeah, but that's not good. You can't really. That's not good reporting because it could start without being a short sale and not, and be. And it, they didn't change it. it oh, yes, it could. I think there's a bad reporting system. Well, it will get better over time since it's something that we're looking at now. So, um, and I think short sales are the new norm for real estate. I agree. For at right least now, for the anyhow. Short term. Mm -hmm. I would guess for the next few years, wouldn't you? Absolutely. At least two years, I say. Lenders can't be happy with that. I think lenders are okay with it. I really? Think that, yeah, I think that they would rather deal with us on a short sale than deal with uh, property managers and getting their properties back. They would rather sell it 
and they're getting more money for it, quite frankly. Short sales, I didn't pull stats on short sale okay. sales, but in my in, in recent times. Don't they lose money on all short well, sales? Well, they do lose money, but they but don't lose like as they, much money as they would in a If they got it bad. Right. Okay. Well, here you go. Uh, the short sales, the average price last year was 78.5 compared to the average foreclosure of 46.5. Yeah, so they're, so they're getting significantly more money in short sales. Right. And I just read an article that said that the banks were going to get aggressive with pursuing short sales versus foreclosures. And they were going to be a lot more easier. They were gonna, That's not grammatically correct. Where's my husband when I need him? <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're going to be easier. easier to deal with, the according problem, to the article that I the read. The problem from my standpoint on dealing with uh, short sale with lenders regarding short sales is that every single one of them has a different process and every single one of them you have to relearn it almost every time. I mean the, the system, the, the, what they're going to need, the information that they're going to want is usually the same but it's just always different, always. Mark, are you taking calls? Love to. Good morning. Good morning. Um, since you're doing statistics, I have one I'd like to ask you about. Okay. Um, I'm going It's 3.5%. But, but it used to be that um, in FHA financing, the seller could actually pay for the down payment money. So basically, the buyer was borrowing their down payment money as well. So the buyer could actually come into a house with literally nothing down. And they can still do that in some cases. But uh, FHA now requires that the buyer bring in 3.5% of their own money. So with regard to down payment on an FHA loan, it has gone from the seller being able to assist with assist with down payment money to the buyer having to bring in three and a half percent of their own money. Now that said, the buyer can get a gift from a family member, uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be their own money, but they have, per se, but they have to bring in three and a half percent of the purchase price. Thank you. Good question. And, and a lot of things, a lot of deals are cash these days because the oh, prices yeah. are so low. We had what thirty six percent of our transactions were cash last year. Uh huh. And several of them over two hundred thousand. Isn't that something? Yeah. Hmm. But four or five years ago, you you could get into a house for nothing, couldn't you? Sure. Well, there is still rural development, but I think they're out of money right now. But rural development has zeroed down, but you got to be outside the right. boundaries. Um, it's, you I know, just saw a deal close on rural development yesterday. So, I think, so maybe yeah. they got their funding. Mm -hmm. um, and your average credit score has got it, or your minimum credit score has to be 640. It's just harder to get a loan these days. And yeah. so I don't think it's harder to, you know, if you're buying a $50,000 house, 3.5% is what, $1,700? So it's not terribly difficult to buy a house financially, cash-wise, but, but it's hard to get a loan to do. Right, because they're going to verify everything. Everything, more things than you ever thought. So if you sold your house, let's say you sold it on line contract, now they require that line contract to be in place for two years. Is that what it is? To be <clears throat> to use Recorded? the income. Uh, I don't know about the recording part. I I always assume line contracts are recorded, but um, same thing with the rent. But be, and for a while there, just you know, six to eight months ago, they were just saying, well, if you have a, if you rented your house, then six, you have to have six months reserve somewhere for that house payment and property tax and insurance. So yeah, they changed the they changed <clears throat> how that ball bounces. And each one does different time. things. Under yeah, the underwriters that look at this stuff, crazy people. <laughs> well, we're selling one. But you right can't now. you can't blame the banks, I guess. <laughs> Or the lenders uh, uh, to be well, some of more, it just, more strident. Like, I just had there. one yesterday that the buyer, it's a short sale, and the seller has to provide, when she bought the house, her name was X. And then after she got married, it's X slash Y. And they want to see a copy of her marriage license. Seriously. That's crazy. Right. So she has to 
email them. She has to scan and email them her marriage license. I think that's crazy. Okay. Where's your coffee from? My house. Oh, but this is kind of cool, this little grabby thing. Yeah. Hold it, you're on the radio. I know. Well, I Nobody just cares so... about that. Well, they have to go to the website to see what we're talking about. <laughs> Who said it was coffee? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that is true. So what else you got? Well... So those are our stats. So prices are, uh, at least for the last few years, they've kind of leveled. They're down and up a little bit. They went down, they went up, and they've gone down a little bit. And but pretty close. Bit. So I think 12, what do you think is going to happen in 12? I think we're going to see an increase in jobs. Yeah. So you, you I, think, I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think there's a positive energy going on. Look at what, that. What, uh... Where are those jobs coming from? <laughs> well, they'll come from somewhere, but okay. you'll see. I mean, there's Hyundai. Hyundai, I heard on your radio show. Well, that's in Washtenaw. But that's okay. Not everybody wants to live in Washtenaw County. It's a, it's double, if not more, to live right. in Washtenaw County. Well, Especially right now. Well, well you. That's a lot more than double, I think. Yeah. Um, that's fifty jobs. That's fifty jobs, but you know, if everybody did fifty jobs, but those about fifty jobs, jobs create fifty incomes that are going to ancillarily. That's not a word either, but they're going to spread out. You know, that money's going to spread out. What did I hear that, you know, for every dollar that's spent uh, in construction, that $8 it gets put into the local economy? I don't know, but it's it's cool to make up things like yeah. that. <laughs> Maybe $80. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I hope there are jobs. No, I think coming. people are starting to invest and reinvest back. Well, look at the auto industry. Look yeah, but they, they have downsized. It's not like they, they're hiring some of their people back, but it's not like they're really adding jobs. But, well, it's better than not hiring I understand people. that, right. but I, I'm thinking about the, the people show, that right? are out of work. Are you Excuse going to the auto show? No. Hmm. I'll read about it. I'll tell you about it because okay. I'm going to go. Are you going? Yeah, are you going? Right I want to go, but Tuesday I doubt morning. that it's going to happen. I doubt it, too. We're usually not here during it, right? But we are now. So anyway, what else do you have? We're well, thinking about thinking real estate at seven eight seven three three nine seven. Oh, there's a question seven eight seven three three nine seven. Good morning. Yes, am I on the air? You are. Um, I got a question for your guest there. Yeah. I had a friend who I, took, I had a friend who just took a transfer of Ford down to Louisville, Kentucky. Cost of living down there was ridiculously less than here, just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. bought, a, bought a beautiful home, gorgeous home, that uh, an executive type home, just on a, you know, for regular workers' salary, which is still pretty good, but it's a beautiful place. Right. Uh, I, what I see is I see a lot more people leaving Michigan, and if there aren't jobs being created, I don't think they're creating them here. I think they're creating them somewhere else. So I'd like them to, I'd like them to discuss that because just because jobs are going up. Maybe in some areas. I don't see it here in Jackson. Yep. That's all I got to say. Thank okay, you. thank you. Well, that's fair. Last year, Michigan was a net zero uh, growth state, meaning we didn't lose any and we didn't gain any. And that was the first time in a few years that that's happened. Uh, so, and I would say that if somebody can move into another area and get a better house for less money, then to me, that says that they're. Uh, real estate market in any way or anyway is a little depressed because that means that you can get a great house for less money. Right. So that's but we the, always but have that's to look at taxes it. too. Yeah, taxes, I mean, I don't know. I think our taxes are high. For yeah, the I, I haven't, I uh, haven't measured that up, but that was, that's a fair comment. Yeah. And uh, you have any new listings? I do. I do too. Want to hear them? Sure. Thirty-eight, thirty-six Lenlow off the of Stonewall Road. Oh, that was cute it's when you sold it. It's a great house. Yeah, three bedrooms, two baths. 149, cheapest house in that neighborhood. Off Stone Totally Hollywood. renovated. Beautiful. Um, move in. Move in ready. Uh, and then uh, 14, Call Mark Meyer. Mm -hmm, 1414 Joseph, Northwest Schools, three bedrooms, one bathroom, 59.9. That's cheap. That'll sell. Cheaper than rent. Oh, well, that's for sure. Move in ready? Yeah. Mm, yeah, close. Okay. Close. I got 485 Skyline in Horton. This is a cream puff house, three bedrooms, two full baths, 124.5. Sits on a double lot, two car attached garage, Hannibal Horton Schools, uh, full basement with tall ceilings. And then 814 Wildwood, 
That'll be up on the market on Friday. <clears throat> Three bedrooms, one and a half baths, the fifty nine nine. Boy, is the cleanest one of the cleanest house I've ever seen. Call this number. Seven eight zero three eight zero zero. I'm gonna sit back.